Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting. Today is April 22nd. I'd ask everybody to please rise and recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd ask everybody to please remain standing. Um, at this time, we'd have to, like to have a moment of silence for all the victims of the uh, terrorist attack in Boston. Our hearts and prayers uh, go out to them, uh, to all the first responders, all, all of the um, victims, and um, hope, for, hope, hope for healing as we move forward. Thank you. All right, so the uh, bulk of our meeting tonight is to um, interview uh, two candidates that have replied to the uh, internal posting for our police chief's uh, position. And we have, like I said, we have received uh, uh, two uh, responses and two candidates. And um, I'll go over the process uh, real quick. Um, we'll start by giving the candidates, uh, both candidates, uh, you know, five minutes or so, or a couple of minutes to talk about uh, themselves, give us a uh, introductory uh, 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 kind of a paragraph or, or two on <laughs> and then from there what we'll do is uh, we'll do a round robin questions um, and then we'll leave some time at the end about five minutes or so for the candidate to ask us any questions um, and we are going to stay consistent with the questions we have a list of 34 <coughs> questions I think it is or 36 questions that we've all submitted and um, we're going to ask uh, do our very very best to uh, ask both candidates the same questions so that being said Lieutenant Thompson, come on up. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Oh, and thank you for, for responding yeah. and, and applying. And thank you. And I know it's been a tough week for everyone, too, uh, in, in, with the events in uh, Boston. Yeah. I, you know, my heart goes out to everyone, the families and everything. And, but I, I take it there's more good than evil in this world, so that's what you have to base your life on, really. So, welcome. Thank you. Give us a, uh, you know, just a brief, and, and please, don't be nervous. We're all, you know, all right, <laughs> it's an yeah. internal post. I so. haven't applied for a job in 30 years, so I, I, I'm going I'm to be nervous. <laughs> yeah. I, I, Looking for a towel? Yeah. Or, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> I, uh, I, I, water. I'll be as brief as I can. I, uh, I, I graduated from Maskinomit. Uh, my father, being the person he is, he didn't let me sit around the house too long, so I decided I'd hook up and go down to the Marine Corps and go to Paris Island for three months. and. I did my obligation. I, w I was in the reserve for six years, and I was honorably discharged. Uh, when I when I came back, I uh, went on to get my associate's degree at Northern Essex Community College. During that time, I met the former Chief Spencer. That was 1981. Uh, I I was studying criminal justice. I I I came on as a reserve. I got friendly with him. I came on in October of 1981. I worked at a reserve position from. October of 81 till December of 1983. At that time, a full-time position came up. And so January of 1984, I went to the academy. Uh, obviously graduated from the academy. Uh, been working here full-time since. From 84 to 1996, I, I was a patrolman, working various shifts at the time. Uh, when I first got on, there was a chief and all patrolman. And then eventually, there was some uh, promotions during that time. In 1996, I was promoted to sergeant. There was another sergeant at the, uh, at the other at the same time. There was Dan Beaton. He was a senior sergeant to me. We split our duties uh, for several years until uh, he retired in 2002. At uh, that point, I was in charge of the agency uh, for three months. I was the acting chief uh, in charge of the agency until uh, Chief Mulligan came over. And when he came over, I did my best to. Give him all the you know the demographics of the community, the agency, and uh, try to take him under my wing as much as I could and explain the whole agency to him. And and uh, I, I think I did a good job at that. And in 2003, I was uh, promoted to lieutenant, which is still my rank now. I'm in charge of the patrol division in the agency, uh, so I'm in charge of all three shifts. Uh, I'm the court uh, liaison officer. I spend a lot of time up at court uh, dealing dealing with any of the court issues we have in town. I'm in charge of the dispatch center uh, with the dispatches there. And and uh, so that's really, that's where we are today. OK. All right, I'm, what I'm going to do is ask uh, Selectman Stu to uh, start us off with the first question. 
All right, I'm going to ask the big question, and in your own words, um, why do you want to be uh, Georgetown Police Chief, and, and why do you believe you're the uh, best qualified candidate for us? Well, I, I want to be the chief because that's I strive for that. Uh, I've been here. I've been a faithful employee for, well, I've, I've been on the agency almost 32 years and all, and then in this January will be 30 years. Uh, I, and actually, I spent my whole adult life here. Uh, I've started at 21. I'll be 53 in a couple of months. So, uh, and that's what I strive by. I think I'm the best candidate because I have more experience than anyone else. I never wavered. I, I, I never left the agency, and I've been here, and I've been a dedicated employee for the last 30 plus years. Thank you. Okay. Um, Gary, you want to go next? Okay. I'll say, uh, please briefly describe your first 90 days on the job. Where, where will you place your priorities and why? First, I, I, th I think some of the things we have to deal with as far as um, on the job is one hole in our boat right now. We have a lot. We, we have an older agency, and there's a lot of vacation time and a lot of scheduling going on right now. Um, in, in take for average, I think there's probably, if you, there's 15 full-time employees, if they all get four weeks vacation a year, you're talking 300 plus days you have to fill. And what we've done, and, and I'm not talking anything bad about it, because sometimes when things work years ago, they don't work now, but we've filled a lot of um, reserves in, and replaced them and almost in a full-time position. And one of them is the school liaison officer, which opens up another 25 shifts a month. Uh, we have two of us, not only the chief, but the two lieutenants are administrative duties. And, and what that does, there's some open shifts that have to be filled, and plus with vacation time. And so we, we can fill up to 100 shifts a month and for reserves. And we really we use, we utilize them as much as we can, but I, I think we overuse them. Uh, um, and I, I think that's one of the priorities. And I think that's one of the main priorities. That's a hole in our boat right now. All right. And the other thing, if I could just yeah, add sure, a minute. Yeah, sure, keep going. I, sure. The other thing that's a hole in our boat is, is, is the comp time. I, the, the, we don't cap that. And I know there's, we haven't capped that. And I, that also adds to, you know, filling more shifts with reserves when people have hundreds of hours of comp time. So that, that's a problem. Mr. Smith? Sure. So uh, from your experience, um, an observation, what's the single most important characteristic you would say is uh, for an effective police chief? Honesty. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm next, I guess. Cool. <laughs> I'm going to do this round robin stuff. Stop punching. <laughs> uh, please describe your general communication and relationship management style uh, regarding three areas, and I'll give you Three, uh, give me an example of each. Uh, town administrator relations, board of selectmen uh, relationships, and relationship with the fire chief. Sure, I, I think they're all good. I, what I do is I, I believe in a strong chain of command. So really, ma mainly with the board of selectmen is the police chief. Unless I'm the person in charge, and I'm the number two person in the agency in charge, and so I'll work with directly with the selectmen that way if, if, if I'm designated to do so. And I think I have a good relationship, but I wouldn't overstep, in my position now, I would never overstep the chief to go to you, to the Board of Selectmen. Right. Uh, town Administrator, the same thing. I see him when I, you know, when I'm, like, the last um, uh, department head meeting, I was the one there. Uh, no one else was there, so I dealt with him that way. Uh, in replacement of the chief, uh, you know, and that's, that's how I deal with it that way. So, so in that, although, as your role as the chief, Right. How would you handle those relationships? I, I work directly for you, you know, as far, it, it, for the Board of Selectmen. That's what I'm saying. So right. the other bosses, it would come to me, and then you, you, you filter it to the agency, the lieutenant, side, and so what have you. Okay. What about the, the management style? What would, you, what would you say your management style is? I, I, well, I, I, think, I think you have to be up front with people, I, and I, I really think that's the key. I, 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 there's no hidden agendas. I think that's really what you have to do, and you have to lay your cards on the table. And, and you, you do that with management, but you do it, I think you have to do that with the community, too. I think the more you know, transparent you are, I think the less problems you have. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Very good. Stu? <clears throat> uh, could you describe how you would um, transition 
to the new post uh, if you were selected in the first six months and um, how would you would be an effective chief during those first six months? Sure. I, anytime there's a transition, because of course we dealt with one 10 years ago, that you, what you have to do is really the, the, the people that work for you, you have to get them to know that, all right, you are the boss, you're here. And the, and the caveat to this is most of them know me, they know my style. And so I think you have to get them to jump on board and you, and you, and you point in the direction of the things that you want to do. Like I mentioned to Mr. Fowler, this is the thing, you work with the unions. Uh, I've been a union steward and I, so I think it's good that we have a great <clears throat> agency. And so you, you don't want to cr create any type of institutional paranoia if you are the chief and you, and you think you're going to start knocking heads. I, I know all these people, I work with them all for years, we're all pretty much seasoned veterans here. So I, uh, I, I, I think that that's the way you handle things. And, and to be up front, I, I think if you can handle things internally and you're up front with your people, it makes life a lot easier. Thank you. Gary? Uh, describe your approach to team building. Uh, is this important to you? Absolutely, it's important to me. I, y y you have to have it. And in order to be an effective chief, you have to have effective people around you. Smartest chiefs in the world will put smartest <laughs> smart people around them. I, I think that's the, that's the best thing you can do. And so when you have people on you, and, and we're, you know, I'm not saying Chief Mulligan has done things like that, but I, I do the same thing. We, we have people from within that are a lot better at doing things than I am. And then you, you and you, so you, you have them work for you in this. I might be better at other issues. And uh, we have a great team. And so I, I think that's how you do things. I, I know that's how you do it. Um, you're upfront, honest, and that's the way I handle things. Thank you. You're welcome. So, who is a person that you admire, and uh, what's special about them? Am I my father? I, uh, my mother passed away when I was nine, and uh, he he brought us kids up, and he he was a, he was a good man, and he's of course he's he's gone now, but he um, he was a World War II veteran, and he. Uh, Geez, he never discussed any of that. And I, and I got to hand it, it, even that whole generation, w when they came back from the war, they expected nothing. I, I had an, I, in lieu of my father, I had an uncle that was shot down. He was a POW and he actually escaped. And I used to kid around because he was actually in Stalag like 13, like Hogan's Heroes, but that was a Stalag. Like. <laughs> but, you know, when he came back, he, he lived in Portland, Maine. He was a baker. And I always admired people like that that were very humble, never discussed anything. And uh, they went about their business, and the world didn't know them any favors. And, and that's the people I admire. Great, thank you. Um, what do you consider the key issues facing the, the, the actual our police department, the Georgetown Police Department, and what would you do to uh, address them? And it's no knock on our current chief or current oh, administration no. or anything I, like that. Well, Please, I, I, so not take it that way. But I, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't talk. He's a great man, so I, I wouldn't talk anything bad about that. But you, and the thing is, too, is agencies change. Like, like I said to Mr. Fowler, as agencies change, some, some, you have to change. What worked three years ago might not work today. And, and one of them I, I said was the scheduling. The, the other thing you're going to see in the, a, the agency within the next two to nine years that we really have to do is, like I said earlier, that a lot of people have been on a long time. You're going to see a lot of retirees. And you'll have up to nine people retire within a six-year period. And when you have 15 people working, that's a lot. So we have to get people the hiring process and people in the mainstream for that. And unfortunately today, unlike when I went to the, to the academy, it was 12 weeks. Now it's 24 weeks. And now, and now there's a lot of unfunded mandates you have to deal with with the, uh, with the uh, dispatches and with us, too, that, 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 would never, that we never had years ago. So those, those are tough issues. Mm. Okay. All right. So scheduling, retire, uh, the scheduling issue and the retiring issue. Uh, yeah, those are two that yeah, I see right off the bat. And there's some budget issues there, too. I mean, if people are retiring and there's money. Absolutely. We, you know. Absolutely there's some budget issues there. And, that, and that's a, it's, it's tough. I, it, and I, you know what, too, Mr. Surface, is uh, what's so tough, too, is that the police department doesn't close. So it's always a moving target. And all you need is one catastrophe <coughs> to kind of clean you out. Uh, and that's, uh, you know, we can't say, well, instead of working eight hours, we're going to have you work six. It just right, doesn't right. work that way. We have to fill that void. Yeah. Okay. Stu. Uh, <clears throat> just a little bit of follow-up on that in terms of when we're, when we're looking at uh, nine retiring in the next six years. What would be your succession plan, and how would you execute a succession plan for those um, in terms of recruitment, retention, and, and building from within? What we have now is, in, uh, and I'll flash back to years ago, 
A lot of the people are the part-time people now only want to work part-time. So we, we would have to, we usually hire from within, but if they don't want the job, then we'll, obviously we got to start recruiting people, at, you know, from the outside and, and get them trained. And, and, uh, and, and it's a very difficult thing, and I'll be perfectly honest with you. They get someone to come in here and, and train for 20, it's tough for us to keep reserves. So to train for 24 months at the academy and, uh, and stay here is a very d difficult thing. But we, we'd have to do the hiring process, and, and, uh, and like I said, we, we would try from within first because I, I think the people in the, in the agency should have the first crack at it uh, if, they're, if they're qualified for it, which they should be. Uh, and I think it's something we have to do. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to do, but I, you know, sometimes you have to go there and just recruit and go out and put, put an ad in you know, police magazines. Uh, there's always police. We get a lot of people that are looking for a job. Hmm. Are, are a lot of the reserves you say working for other departments or firemen or something like absolutely. that? that absolutely, absolutely, and hindrance for them to be able to work for us. Well, time? it can. I, you know, for example, like like three of them are firemen, and if they all work the same schedule, and I need someone for that weekend, it's very difficult. Um, you know, we and so in and, and actually one's a fire dispatch, so there's four that work for fire agencies. And so it can be very difficult to, to fill those voids. And, and, and all the reserves have other jobs. Uh, and, and like I said, we did have some through the years that didn't have any jobs. We can just keep them going all the time, but that's not the case now. So, so we have a lot of police officers that are part-time with us that are full-time police officers in other communities, but, or firemen, or? What, I, in other words, me? those, the, the uh, uh, part-timers that don't want to go full-time it's because they're police officers in other communities too or, or firemen or they're vested okay. in their other job you oh, know I and, and so so that's what happens like you know uh you know we have one that's a long-term ipswich fireman he's a lieutenant there so he's not going to come here you I know see. as far as uh okay makes sense okay gary uh would you describe the most difficult experience you've had during your career and then uh, what did you learn from this experience? Uh, have you grown as a result of, a result of this? I think the most difficult experience is uh, telling a parent their child died. And, 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 and that is, in, and, and let me tell you, that's an eye-opener. Uh, I don't know if it, mat it matures your ages. I'm not too sure. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a very difficult, difficult thing to do. And uh, the, the younger the child, the harder, and I, I'm not... China, so, but it's been it's been difficult. Now those are things in my past 30 years that I can honestly say that, that that's tough. That's the worst. Well, thank you for your honesty. I've lost a child, so I can thank you. Relate to that. Hi, Steve. Uh, so, in general, you know, even maybe outside Georgetown a little bit, but what are the three top challenges facing police chiefs today? Unfunded mandates. I think that's that, that's one of them. Um, I think I think the um, I, I how can I word this correctly? I I I think sometimes the state isn't as um, pro police sometimes as far as getting us the money, uh, as far as with grants or any of that. Uh, I I think that's very difficult, and and I think as a chief now. I, I think you have to worry, the Chiefs now is worried about getting good recruitment now because of the way the retirement system has changed and is, uh, you know, we used to have the Quinn and so, and so on and so forth. If there's no Quinn, the education, you'll lose the education. You'll be hiring police that don't care about getting a master's degree like I did. And so I, I think those are some of the challenges. You won't get the quality officers that, that, that you would get. Great, thank you. Thank you. All right, so let's let's turn to you a little bit more. We'll maybe sure. get away from the department end of it. So uh, I think there was a question here that said, um, "What do you consider your biggest weakness?" I'm private. I'm a private per and I, if that's a weakness, I uh, 30 years in the job, and and I, I love working with the public, and I and I enjoy that, and I and I want to continue to enjoy that, and I will. But when I'm with my family, I, and you got to remember. I've been at this for 30 years, so I've been on call basically for 30 years. And I, in 1996, when I was a sergeant, I had a beeper, and that thing was always going off. And now, as a lieutenant with the cell phones, and it's going. So I've been on call for the last 17 years as a as a ranking officer. So when I'm home, I, I'm a private man, and when I go out, I'm pretty private. And I and people can 
can, can kind of think that I, I you know, I, I, that could be a bad, you know, that could be a bad thing. I don't know. I, I just think I, I just like being private that way because I'm dealing with the public all the time, and people might read that wrong. Okay. Okay. So the next part of the question is, what's your greatest strength? I, I think it's, I'm up front I, and I'm honest. I, I, I don't beat around the bush. I, I'm not a guy that back towards anyone that way. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I mean, you get what you get. Yep. We can see that. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> I must be doing something right. That's right. <laughs> at, least, at least I got one question right. <laughs> no, no, please don't feel that way because <laughs> I mean, we respect your commitment, we respect what you do, and we respect your career. So don't, don't feel like there's any right or wrong answer at all, please. <laughs> All right, so who's up next, Stu? I'm up, I guess. Okay. Uh, um, explain a little bit of your view um, on technology and computer integration in the police department today and then where you maybe see it going in the future. Technology just continues. Technology is great. I, it, it just continues to go and take look at look what happened this past week with technology. Right. You know, and, and I, I think it's great. And I, you know, I always tell people, assume you're on camera when you walk out of your house. So I, I think it's great. Right now we have the cameras that are in the schools. Uh, we can monitor them from the station. I, I think these are wonderful things. It's a great tool. And, I, and, and honestly, I, I, I think it's going to just continue to get greater and faster. Um, I, I, I think it's a wonderful tool. Um, when you when you're a little older like me, I'm not as quick as to, with technology as this, you know. But yeah, it's it's wonderful. So you know, I just see it getting better. Um, and, you know, I mean, and as a police officer, I, I don't mind Big Brother watching. So I see. Yeah. yeah, well, certainly made a difference. Uh, Absolutely. Where officer. else I, I, can you get two people that quickly? I mean, really, I, 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 if that's what you're talking. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just, I, it's a wonderful thing. Uh, how will you ensure that the services provided by the department are consistent with the needs and desires of the community? You, in order to have a, a, a good police department, okay, you can't do it alone. You, you, you know, uh, you have to have collaborators with the community, and, and, and I think like right now I'm, I'm on, uh, I'm on a sub, uh, safety subcommittee with the, with the schools. Which we uh, we deal with traffic issues, uh, we deal with uh, students, um, you know, riding the bus, going to drop off with the bus, pick up with the bus. Uh, we deal with uh, pedestrian issues as far as um, crosswalks. We have one on North Street that over across from Pearly was just terrible. I, I thought it was. I had it moved uh, with the help of Peter Durkee. Uh We had it moved. I shouldn't say I because, it, but we had it moved just just south of there, which is in a lot better spot. Um, when you have collaboratives with, with other people, and uh, that, that's the best way. You do it with the businesses, the schools, you know, the highway, the light department, uh, the, the fire department. Uh, that, that's how things work. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Mr. Chair, are we at the point where I can uh, maybe ask you a different question? Sure. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Chief Mulligan and, and has said on several occasions, uh, including the uh, recent State of the Town, that he believes well, we're down a, a full-time police officer from where we were a period of time ago. Right. Uh, considers it an issue. Right. So I guess my question to you is, um, do you also consider it an issue? Um, will it keep you from being successful as a chief moving forward? And how would you? What would your plan to be to try and address that um, from our view? Look at it. Sure, it is an issue. Uh, when I came, when I came on the agency in 1981, there was probably 56 or 5,700 people in town. Uh, over these 30 years, we're probably talking about 8,500. Georgetown's one of the fastest growing communities in the Commonwealth, and so in order to keep up, I mean, we're we're kind of a victim of our own success. It's a desirable place to live. People want to move here. And so when people want to move, move here, what do you have? You have traffic issues that you have to deal with. I mean, the, the square, so it's, it's, and so absolutely, I, I would go on, I, I agree with them. We need an extra officer. Um, and I, uh, the, I mean, the more coverage, the better. Uh, you should have two, two officers per thousand working the street. So, uh, uh, you know, we fall short that way. And uh, we do very well with what we have. I mean, 
obviously, whatever the board or the finance committee gives you, you work with. We've been very creative that way. Um, and we, we don't have a lot of fat. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So uh, kind of piggybacking on, the, on that, a good question that, that I see is, you know, when you, if you are the chief and you're involved in the hiring, obviously going to be involved in the hiring, what are the, qual what are the most important qualities that you feel are important for our next hirees uh, and next people to fill in for, you know, the, the nine people that are retiring? What do you, you think is the, the best uh, qualities? That's in law enforcement. Really, you have to have a stellar background. I mean, you, you really, obviously, you, 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 you get people that haven't been in trouble with the law. Uh, you know, you try to get people that haven't had, you know, credit issues or, or any of that type of issues. You have to, you try to get the educated people uh, as much in criminal justice. Uh, obviously, you want, you want to, people to have good rapport with the community and the neighbors. Uh, those are the people you do. I mean, you hire the best of the best. That's what you try to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, Stu. Uh, <clears throat> on uh, community-oriented policing, um, tell us a little bit about your approach. We know that Chief Mulligan has been a real, you know, advocate of community policing. Right. Um, you know, what do you think, what do you think works best currently? And then are there areas that you would look to improve in, in what we're doing as, as community policing? I. I like your question because I do one of the things he's done I know that is I like the school liaison officer and, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why and I wish it was a full-time position so I like to have one person there with the with the students get to know that person I, I, I think that's a good rapport uh, and also with the school liaison officer you, you build friendships uh, and the people in the, in the students in the school will build, build friendships with the police and if, if there was a person that was there constantly I, I know they could um, they could, they could add, like I know Jimmy Rodden used to give classes, and I know some school liaison officers that, that work full time, what they'll do is they'll, they'll talk to the juniors and seniors about getting their license, and they'll give a class about, you know, how police approach and new licensees. Uh, we have a mock action that is going to be coming up with it, and I think those things are a key. And, and it also looks good for us because we're open, we're transparent out there. I think, th I think that's... Uh, you know, something we need and should continue. I, the, the more you're out there in a the community, the, the easier your job is because you find yourself, when you can take care of small problems, and really there's no call too small, when you can take care of uh, small problems, you, you, you don't get the big ones. And, and that's what happens. You aren't left cleaning up the mess of the big problems if you take care of the small ones. And so that's how I feel. Um, what else could we do? I, I think there are some things that, We've tried, we haven't tried recently, we've tried in the past. Uh, we used to have a civilian police academy. I was one of the ones that instituted that years ago. We, we did it uh, actually for a, a college project years ago and it worked very well. The people liked it. Uh, we, we used to have like etchings at the, um, on, the, on, the, on cars, so the uh, ID cars, we've done that for the public. Uh, the glass etchings. Glass etchings. Uh, the other thing is, and we'll hold on one this Saturday, when you have open houses at the police department, I, I think that's a key thing. And uh, so, it, so it, makes us, it makes us out there and we're real. It, we aren't just someone driving around the cruiser. I'm going to pass right now. You're going to pass right now? Okay. Thinking of a hard one? <laughs> <laughs> He's got the doozy comments. Here we go. Uh, uh, <laughs> all right, Mr. Smith. Um, so... One thing we've become accustomed to here is the current chief is very good at publicizing uh, all of uh, his team's accomplishments, sure. awards, um, uh, successes, um, uh, arrests, important ones, and so forth. Where does that fall on in terms of your capabilities to uh, uh, promote in terms of what your department uh, and team are doing? And also in terms of your priorities, that's definitely one. I you, you, one thing good about police, if if you, I mean, when you take care of your, your people and you give them accolades, they feel good about it. I know if you say I did something good, you feel great about it. So you continue that because our, our job can be thankless. It can be very difficult at times, um, e even in a small community. So when they do something good, you recognize them for that, and I, and, you, and you do it in public. And you know I. I'll steal from the chief. You always, you always give accolades in public, and then if you 
reprimand someone, you do it in private. And I, and I think that's, that's an approach anyone should have, and I think that's a classy approach to do. Anyone that does something outstanding should be recognized for it, and the community should know. And, and, and I think that's good, because once you're out there in the paper, and, uh, or here, or what have you, uh, people, they like that, they respect that, and they know the police officers are working hard for them. And, and you know, and don't forget, we have people out there every night doing their job, and you know, when, when all of us are sleeping, because I work during the day, they, they're out there working. And, and you can rest assured they're doing their job because we, we have a very proactive patrol out there, and I, 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 I give them all the credit in the world. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Um, so, a little, a little along those lines, too, there's going to be a balance between um, what your attention is going to be in terms of um, uh, how much time you spend um, on either department personnel or the public, meaning the citizens. So the question is around, and I'll read it verbatim, what, what should get more of your attention, department personnel or the citizens of Georgetown, and why? Hmm. You didn't tell me you were going to ask. No, that, <laughs> no. that's. I, you, know, you know, I, it, it, I, I think because there's a balance. All right, there, there is a balance, and I, I you know, I, but I, if you, you have to have a good department, and it, I think first of all, you have to make sure your people are doing their job and doing the right job. So I'll say department personnel, um, in, it, but it, obviously not all your focus is on department personnel because when you're the chief, you're the chief of the community. And, and like I said, in order to be a good chief, the, the community has to be behind you. And, and what makes it nice about Georgetown, most people that come here, they're vested in the community. It's a, it's a single family residential uh, town, really. And so what do people do? They pay a lot of money to be here. And they, their kids are going to great schools here. So they're all vested in here, so they want to help you. So you have to pay attention to them, you know? And, and so that's a part of it. But actually, it's the police personnel. If you don't take care of them, you can't take care of the public. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to give me a ratio? Well, you'd be pretty close to fit, but uh, you know, at 60 40. Okay. <laughs> Which way? 60 for the, for the police, obviously, the personnel. Okay. And I don't mean it to be a tough, you know, real tough question. Right. But no, that's it, a good question. I think it's important I, for, to have that balance. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it, it really is. I, like I said, the community is the one. The more you're out there, that, that's what it is. I mean, uh, you know, when I first got on, you kind of shut the door of the cruiser and drove around, and, that, and that's not the way you do it. I mean, you have to go out there and, and be exposed that way, so. Okay. Still? I'm on question five. Um, what's the difference, in your mind, between um, management and leadership? <clears throat> leadership, you have to be in control. Yeah, you, you have to let the people know who's in charge. Uh, no if, ands, buts about it. And then manage, you have to, like, you have to take care of. Um, yeah, it's more of a. I look at management more of a paperwork thing, you know, pen, uh, pencil pushing type of thing. Kind of process, process, that process, process kind of thing. absolutely. As uh, if I could do a follow. Oh, sure. Yeah. From yeah. a leadership perspective, um, you know the uh, uh, you know uh, Chief Mulligan's got 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 a good department. I think he's really you know done a, an exceptional job. Um, you know what you got big whoever's going to fill his shoes has big shoes to fill so sure. on that leadership question you know are there some things that maybe um you think you might want to do differently or better or improve upon in that leadership capacity based on kind of what you've seen being in the department and how it's run and 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 kind of the missions of the department i yeah to be a good leader you have to be a good listener you really do and so i you know like i I mean, I, I'm not going to compare myself to the chief as far as that goes because he, he does a great job as, <clears throat> and uh, he's done a wonderful job. But uh, like, there's certain things that I'd like to do, and like I said to Mr. Fowler, we have some scheduled taboos and stuff like that that we really have to take care of. Um, and and those, it, that's something that, that we have to address, um, and that's something I see right now that we, we really have to do. As far as structural things or, or physical things in the department, is that what you're talking about, or, or just more in uh, yeah, the that, management that, leadership? Side? More of a management type of thing is, as far as that goes. I, I, what what I'd, I'd continue to do is, uh, as managing or being a leader of the agency, we'd, we'd continue with the command staff meetings. And uh, what, what we do a lot, in case there's any questions, we, we do a roundtable with the command staff, because obviously I, I, 
you know, as one person, you can't think of anything. So I feel that was. Uh... Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I want to go uh, revisit a question, maybe ask a little more detail, is that um, my understanding is that in some towns, and I don't necessarily believe it's here, that there can be contention between uh, the fire department and the police department. Um, how would you rate the relationship between our police department and our fire department now? Are there things that need to improve and of equal importance going forward? What are the uh, are there any pitfalls or that we'd have to avoid or how do you manage it and make sure it stays uh, uh, assuming it's good a good relationship I, the relationship's good now I'll, I'll tell you what it is it's open lines of communication okay. you know when yeah it just if something happens you you take care of it right away and you kind of nip it right away so that really that's that's how you do it this if you have a problem you go to the person and, and that's how we do it and so right now you would say uh, the relationships it's a good relationship absolutely between the two. okay great and it, again, to maybe piggyback off Steve a little bit on this, is that um, what about town hall in general? I mean, in terms of the relationship, um, not that we're trying to dig out any, you know, right. it's just, you know, and how would you see that? How would you continue to improve upon that if there is any, if there's any improvement needed at all? I, I think we have a good relationship. I, I think, uh, as uh, Mr. Farrell, we have the uh, we have the department head meetings. You know, uh, so I, I think it is. A, it's a great relationship. I've had a good rapport with, you know, everyone in town hall as far as I know. So I think we, and I think we all do. I mean, I'm not just going to say me. I think the agency does. Uh, we've been there for, been in various offices for, uh, offices for whatever reason. Uh, I don't see a problem. I'm, I'm a little surprised by the question. I unless it, you know, I, I think well, it's a great. Well, I think, and in, in in my reason for the question is this: I think it's a very good relationship. Yes. With the leader, you know, stepping down, we want to make sure that that relationship oh, yeah. stays in place. Oh, absolutely. Or, or if possible, if there is room for improvement, to yeah. improve it. That, no. that, and hey, how would you handle? It? You know, absolutely. Again, how are you hey, going to go about it? Any good leader like you do, you come here, you say, "Hey, I'm Dave Thompson. I'm the new chief. Obviously, they know me as a lieutenant." Right. You know, any issues you want, any issues you, did, you were afraid to ask before, or anything with our agency, or anything, that's how you handle things, absolutely. Right. Okay. And uh, so I'll go with one more, and it's not on the list, but it kind of taking that specific question and applying it to your, uh, uh, the uh, police officers that are there now. Do you think, do you think uh, there's going to be a, a difference in the way you manage them as the lieutenant versus the chief, or you think that you're going to kind of stay along the same type of lines because in some some jaw especially out again outside of police department in my industry sometimes it's a, tr a tough transition to be the second or third in command and move to the top spot because you've made friends and relationships and you know and now all of a sudden you have to make those hard decisions sure. Sure. So you think how much you know? Yeah, you, well, and then this is along that management style type. Sure. Thing, so no, well, to get it. on a lighter role though, when, when you make patrolman the sergeant, that's a big change. I think one of the most important people is sergeant in the agency because that's a big change when you're a patrolman for years and all of a sudden now you're a sergeant. So I made I, I did that for 12 years. So I mean that that was uh, that was something that and, you know, hey things change. I'm the boss now. And so be it. And you and, and you and you say that is in a nice way, obviously. And you. And, and when you when you when you get a new job like that, I think you kind of take baby steps. Like I said, as far as like uh, transitioning people over, and, but you do let them know you are the, you are the leader, mm -hmm. uh, you are the boss, and you know, and you're the one that's gonna you know when things go good, you're applauded. When things go bad, you're, you're the one responsible <laughs> for it. Uh, yeah, the other ones that get the phone calls. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I know it. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Good. Um, <clears throat> Still, uh, yeah, follow -up? Any a, follow -up? a little bit of a follow up on um, this. I think it's more into budgeting and kind of financials and, and, and looking over the horizon a little bit. You had mentioned um, ideally you, you'd like to see the school liaison officer as a full time position, and we're still down one full time officer. How do we get to those two becoming full time positions? How, how do we do it in the budget? How do we do it? In, internally, how do we do it from a PR perspective for the town and the people? Uh, I'm just kind of curious in your thoughts on how we might get from where we are to assuming that those two get filled in. I, good question, because you try to appropriate the money. We don't have a lot of fat in our budget, so you really try to appropriate it. I, I think you'd, I'd work on the guidelines of the, I, 
I, I think it's, I personally think it's great having a police officer in the school. I do. I, I, I like that idea. It's a great rapport. How you get there, sometimes you have to go to the townspeople who have the people in the school, have the children in the school, and ask them. I mean, I, I, I'm going to be blunt. Uh, it, it can be difficult, but I mean, th th we've, ha we've had to do that in the past. If you need a new officer, you ask for him and, and you say, look at the town's growing. And if the town's growing, the police department has to grow with it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, they, from the last 30 years, we haven't put on a lot of extra people. Yeah. I mean, it's that struggle because we, you know, we, we have a, you know, we're, we're looking at the 14 budget right now. Oh. And, you know, I, you, know, you know, kudos to everybody in the town and the way they run their departments because from a fiscal point of view, you know, from, from what every, everything that we see, uh, the department heads really, really think long and hard before they spend money. They're very right. frugal. Um, you know, there's only so much in that bucket. Um, you know, we've got the push and pull of taxes going up between, sure. you know, the schools and, and, and all that. You know, I, I, the question I, is, you know, where do, we, where do we go to get there? I, you know what I mean? Is there things internally that could happen from reallocations or budgeting potentially in that budget at the department? I mean, I, I see it pretty thin right now. It, it you know, is. I, I don't think you have a lot of move, room to move there. I, but, I, I agree. You know, I, you know I, I agree with the whole oh, I there. I, I'm just I'm looking at ideal conditions, mm -hmm. I, and I don't know if there's anything right now. And I, in, in, uh, a job as chief is to work with the Board of Selectmen and, and, and keep their budget down. I mean, let's be honest about it. Keep their budget appropriate. Um, I, I'm talking ideally. I'd like to see that. You can maybe visit it down the road, uh, it, but absolutely, I, I know the taxes have gone up a lot, and I, I know there's a lot of people in town on fixed incomes, and I, I, I do understand that point. I don't have a magic wand to tell you to say, you know, here's the guy, boom, and I, and it, and believe me, as a chief, I know that's not going to happen. I, I know it's a struggle. I know you have to watch the budget, and you have to watch everything, uh, every single day, uh, and it's difficult, and it. You're right. I, I I don't see a lot of money coming in, but I I'm just looking. I wish I could. That's a wish list. Mm -hmm. okay. Can I just build an add-on question? Sure, yes, sure. Just while it's so over the past few years, what has your role been in the budgeting process for your department, and you know how detailed have you uh, gotten and been I, involved with it? I I haven't been. I work when I was acting chief. I I I was dealt with the budget. I was in charge of the budget then. Right now, I I mean. I'm not the one that's in charge of the budget. I know it. I know the line items in there. I uh, I do the I assist with the payroll as okay. far as what the budget goes. Uh, my duties have have been uh, the patrol side of the agency. Okay, great. Okay. So uh, Correct, again, uh, oh, question, oh, I'm Chair. sorry. I thought that was a question. No, go ahead. I have two parts. Oh, go ahead. Uh, so <laughs> go wait, again, go. My, I thought it was a follow-up to Stu. Oh, no, yeah. quick question then is. Do you do we have, in your opinion, any equipment or training gaps right now that uh, significantly compromise the uh, safety of our officers or the safety of the public? No, I, I think we've I think we've done very well on that. Uh, I think we've. Um, so g getting back to the management piece, um, who do you conduct re uh, reviews on each police officer? I, I have my section of that. Yeah, we all, the command staff, we all have our people that we conduct reviews, yes. So as the chief, how would you uh, keep informed on the activities, you know, of your police officers and, you know, uh, basically uh, the strengths, weaknesses of each, you know, kind of, 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 the, of each individual officer and looking at it as a, um, a total police force? You know, the strengths, weaknesses, areas for development and, and how are you going to keep track of what's going on in terms of the activities of your police officers? Well, of course, it, we have a daily log. So you can see the activities, you know, when, when they're going out. And so I, I'm, like now, I read it every single day. I'm in charge of patrol. Uh, you deal with, obviously, the lieutenants or whatever sergeants you have about personnel. And the other thing I think it's crucial for a chief to do and to make sure that you do is, I think a ch chief should be able to visit all three shifts. I, I think that's something that, you know, don't only come in in the day. You can come in an early evening and visit the uh, second shift, and you can come in early in the morning or the late night to visit the third shift, and you can have a sit-down with them and say, hey, you know, how's everything going? What's going on? Because well, I think sometimes with the police, uh, people don't realize we're human. 
you know, they think you're a police and you have families and, and we have issues like everyone else. So I think that's the side of it as a chief to make sure you try to visit all three shifts and all your personnel and you can come in on weekends and visit those that are working. What are you going to do with that information, though, going f to go forward to help the department grow and uh, improve their performance? I, I, when you communicate with them, I, I think you can, you know, as a chief, you, you're almost father. You know what I'm saying? I've, I've been here for, I mean, I, I'm the longest person that's been serving on the agency. I, I've been number two for the last 12 years. So I, they look up to you. I've been time tested. I, I think they listen to you that way, really. And, and, and you are the boss. And so, you know, when it comes down that way and you, and you say, this is how I would do things, I, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. All right. Um, Gary, you want to jump in? Uh, yeah. You, how did you get back to it? it as a chief, you're going to be busy, but how would you see yourself as to availability to the public? A citizen walks in that you've perhaps never seen before and says, sure. oh, I want to see the chief. Right. Maybe he doesn't want to tell anybody why. Right. Um, how would you handle that? Yeah, absolutely. That, you, you're always available for the public. You, you have to be available for the public. Um, that's what we're here for. That's all part of, that's really a community policing thing. If someone wants to see the chief, Absolutely, you're available to them because I, I, I would have it no other way. <clears throat> okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, I think it's uh, we have about 10 minutes left, right, Mike? And then we want to give you an opportunity, uh, you know, at the end to kind of summarize and maybe ask us some questions. But I think the last, the last question that we'll ask is when, uh, in, in prepping yourself for the interview, and uh, there's maybe some things that you would want us to ask, have we, uh, what's that question that you feel like we haven't asked you that you really want to tell us and really want to answer? <laughs> Who's going to play me on TV? <laughs> no, I... <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, it's funny. I didn't we think shot of it. shot a couple of movies here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. You, you, know, I, you know, I'll be honest. I didn't think of that. I was trying to think through my head what they're going to ask me. You know, I, you know, well, that's the question. So, yeah. What's, yeah. Did we yeah. miss anything? Yeah. <laughs> no. I, I, you know, I think one of the questions is, is uh, you know, I, you know, I never changed the job. So I, I you know, why haven't I ever done that? I mean, I, I've been, so I, I think that's one. I, I've stayed here. Like I said, I've stayed here for 32 years and I grew up here basically. Okay. All right. Can I ask one? Sure, go ahead. Go. Follow up. Yep. Um, I don't think we asked this, so tell me if I missed it. But um, looking at the next five years, but I mean, m more realistically, next year or so, you know, what are the big three that you were look are looking to accomplish? Big three goals that you'd want to accomplish in the next, you know, one, two, three, five years? I, 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 I asked that, but... I, th I think we do a good job of community policing, but I think we could be out there a little bit more. Uh, I, I, I think a senior relations officer, a reserve officer, he's a great kid, but I think we could deal with the seniors more. Uh, like I said, we want to take care of everyone, but I, I think two of the most important are the, are the children and the seniors. Uh, they're the ones that are getting taken advantage of. So I, I think those that's, that's one of the goals. Um, Another goal uh, I'd like to see, and like I say, in a perfect world, and I think the chief said it, and we just discussed it, discussed it was having, I'd like to have more people on, if that's at all possible. Um, I, that would be a goal I'd like to see. And uh, the third goal I, I think we have to deal with is, um, I think, like I said, the, the, one of the third goals is the holes in the boat is, is was, we have to, deal with our reserves a little lighter we we can't create full-time positions and put reserves in there we have to we have to deal with that mr Fowler, thank you yeah, just just one more with you know as you're shutting down the yeah, i think this will be the last question yep. and then we'll we'll, we'll wrap we'll, up we'll, perhaps we'll have, we'll give you a closing time for that uh, there'll just be a question and perhaps a follow-up what's your feeling on bicycle traffic and the rules of the road as it applies to them <laughs> oh, I know. I, yeah, I, yeah. No, I. And perhaps it, it, has, has I, the department I, I, ever I, issued a citation or anything? Uh, not that I know of. I, I know it's um, it, it, it can be very tough. I know because I, especially on weekends, I've seen it. I, I, I know people that uh, they'll go and they'll be 30 at a time. I could tell you a quick story. I was riding my bike to my sister's house one time, and I'm going very casual, and I she lives over in Topsfield, and. The, 
thank God I didn't take the left because some guy said on your left and 30 bikes went by me, I would have taken them all out. So I, I know, I, I know you're feeling uh, on that, but uh, I, it, it, the roads here really aren't conducive. We don't have any bike paths, so to speak, like a new report and some of the other uh, uh, communities do, and I, that would be helpful. Uh, they, they do have a right to be on the road, though. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> okay, so that, I, I think we've, we've uh, got through a lot of questions. I didn't I, think I know, we'd get I know. through this many I, I, in a I short know. period of time. I, I know. The time that we have. <laughs> <laughs> Question five, I'm going, where have I been? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, so the last, out of order. you know, last <clears throat> five minutes or so, um, you know, any questions you want to ask us, to, uh, any areas that you think we didn't, you know, cover or anything about what we expect going forward or anything that you want to bring up and then just kind of a closing statement, you know, kind of to recap maybe uh, some of the, uh, some of the things we've gone over or even your, you know, or go back to your uh, opening statement and tell us why, you know, you're applying. Any questions on what, how's the future look money wise? Um, if you ask me, yeah, um, any of all you, you know, it's the unfunded mandates. I think that that are going to continue to be an issue for all yeah, of us. Absolutely. I was at the state house today, so I oh. I didn't bring that up. Well, um, and another role today, but you know the point is unfunded mandates, continuing regulation, and uh, the growth in the town and continuing problems. So doing more with less and working smarter and not harder, I think, going forward, I think is a big key. Uh, that'll keep the costs down. Um, I mean, we've added to our stab fund here. We're in pretty good shape. I mean, the budget's balanced for this month, uh, for this year. You know, we have infrastructure issues, so that's going to take some priority. And we don't want to be, you know, taxing people out of town either. We have school issues and, you know, building issues and sure. infrastructure that we can't keep up with. So it's going to be a difficult challenge. So how's the money look? I say, eh, okay. You know, not too bad, not too great. Okay. Put it that way. Thank so, you. Status quo. Status quo. Yeah. I think yeah. we're, we're getting <laughs> through it. As sure. we go, but you know, you know, um, again, how would you, you know, how are you going to balance that as the police chief? Because, you know, we want to add bodies, but we don't really have the money. It's going to be a tough balance. But then obviously you can't, right? You right. know, that's you know. <laughs> right. Right. So, all right. So you want to recap, or you want again any other questions besides the uh, money issue? No, I, I don't have any or? questions. Um, in my turn to speak. Sure, mm -hmm. go ahead, go. Oh, so, good. I, uh, I. I consider myself the most fortunate person in the world, to be honest with you. I, I, I never dreamt of, in 1981, working here part-time and then taking a full-time job in 84 and just, I've been here, for, it'll be 32 years in, in October and it'll be full-time 30 years in, in January. I, you know, like we always say, where's the time gone? I, I have cherished every moment of it. I, uh, I, I've been very fortunate. I've, I've stayed with this agency all this time. The community's been great. The people in the community have been great. Uh, I've dealt with so many people through the years. I've dealt with them when they were kids and parents, and now some of them are grandparents. I, I, so I, I feel like I'm part of the community, and, and, and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and, I, and I'm fortunate. I, uh, and I want to continue to do that, and I'd like to end my career as chief here. Okay, great. All right, well, any other uh, any follow-up to that? Well, great job. Thank oh, you. Thank, thank you very much. I appreciate it very much. And, and again, thanks for all the years of service. We don't oh, say that thanks. very often, Absolutely. often enough. But, <laughs> and thanks for everything. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Right. right on the queue. Hey, Lieutenant Hawaii. Good evening. Good evening. Do we want to uh, start right in? Uh, either we that have, or. Take a few, um, whatever you, you know, take, about, take a five yeah, we're gonna minute take a, recess. I'll entertain a motion to take a five minute recess. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. These guys get what we're doing there? I'm Probably not. Don't think they're paying attention. <laughs> Can we let them know that we're in recess, please? Yeah. But we didn't think we were going to, we didn't think we were going to get to that many questions. We really.
So our second candidate um, that has applied for the chief's position is uh, Lieutenant Donald Cudmore. Lieutenant, come on up. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So uh, here's the format. Uh, what we've done is we will ask you to give us a, uh, you know, just a, a little uh, opening statement, uh, kind of a quick synopsis. Okay. And then we'll do a round robin questions. Um, I'm going to try to stick to the same questions that we asked uh, the other lieutenant. So, so sure. welcome and uh, well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yours, uh, for those who don't know me, uh, I, I imagine we're on uh, television tonight. Um, my name is Lieutenant Don Cudmore with the police department. Uh, I'm a resident of Georgetown. I live on Ballpate Road with my wife Ruth Ann. Uh, we've been married for 25 years, and we have two daughters. Uh, my oldest daughter is a senior, uh, Devin. Uh, over at the Georgetown High School, and my younger daughter, Danielle, is a freshman at the high school. Uh, Ruth Ann is a uh, secretary uh, for the main office. A lot of people know my wife who have children. Uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, we a as a couple, have been in Georgetown for about 43 years. I'm a 43-year resident. Uh, I believe one time I said to Mr. Fowler, I think you have to have 50 years to be a, a townie, so I still have seven to go. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, we... We, we did live one year uh, outside of Georgetown. Uh, we bought a house uh, when we first got married, uh, and we found out that was the first biggest mistake as a couple that we made. So we moved back to Georgetown immediately, and, and here we stay. Um, <clears throat> I've been with the police department for uh, 28 years. Uh, I started, like most officers do, as a reserve officer and dispatcher. Uh, I came on uh, when I was 20 years old, and um, I was going through college at the time. I uh, completed my bachelor's degree at Salem State and went on to get my master's degree in uh, Criminal Justice Administration in 1993. Um, just about that time, uh, I had taken a job with Travelers Insurance Company when I did uh, graduate from college, and uh, I was a line supervisor for them, and I was promoted to uh, uh, a field uh, office supervisor uh, investigating insurance fraud. Uh, still working as a reserve officer, uh, but even though I excelled at the insurance company, gaining some valuable corporate training and management training, uh, my passion was law enforcement. So uh, I came back to Georgetown uh, full time and um, excelled at the police department. As, as you see today, I'm, I'm currently a lieutenant. I worked my way from master patrol officer to sergeant to administrative sergeant uh, to <coughs> lieutenant today. The Georgetown Police Department has a unique situation. We have two lieutenants, so we have two executive officers and two second in commands. So uh, that's where I sit today on that organizational chart. My responsibilities uh, with the police department are many. Uh, I, I submitted an extensive package to the board. I, I am responsible for every aspect of the administrative side of the police department, but I also serve a dual role because during the day, I also staff a patrol position myself. I respond to calls for service. I'm actually suited up at times when the schedule uh, is, is light to uh, respond to calls for service, and, and people have seen me in that capacity. Uh, probably my primary focus with the police department has been uh, budget and finance. Uh, I've been doing the fiscal year budget uh, and drafting that budget since uh, 2006. I've submitted uh, six fiscal year budgets. I've presented to this board many times. I present to the FinCom as well, and I present at town meeting. Uh, with that budget and finance experience, I'm also responsible for uh, grant administration, I've written many, many grants, tens of thousands of dollars of grants for the police department. One I'm most proud of, obviously, is the school resource officer grant, which brought in uh, $150,000 to the community. We had a three-year uh, community uh, school resource officer with a one-year retention agreement. In 2009, we lost that position. Uh, 2009 was a very difficult year for the town of Georgetown uh, financially, so we did lose that position. Um, in addition to uh, grant and uh, finance management of the police department, um, responsible for probably the biggest component, which is our people. Uh, I do all the selection and recruitment for the police department. Uh, this recent hire that we brought before this board, I interviewed 25 people uh, for five positions, police positions. Um, I drafted those particular policies, uh, and in doing that, uh, we, we brought some really fine candidates to the, to the police department, some fine young officers, uh, as, as you see uh, before you today. Uh, they're excelling, and uh, the positions for law enforcement today are very competitive. Uh, these candidates had bachelor's and master's degrees, and very, very smart, intelligent uh, police officers. 
and a, a strong component of the new policy is uh, health and wellness, physical fitness standards, uh, which I'm also responsible for. Uh, the Probably the uh, largest um, component of my responsibilities is accreditation manager. Back in 2006, I began the accreditation process as a sergeant. I got the police department certified in 18 months for a, uh, a process that's supposed to take three years. I was very aggressive. I, I, I saw the need and I had the desire to do it. And then uh, exactly one year to the day of September 2007, uh, the police department was accredited uh, under my command. The accreditation process uh, in that one year period resulted in us becoming accredited and only being the 29th police department in the, in the Commonwealth to be accredited. And today there are only 43. So that was a monumental task for our department. Our policies were dated. They needed to be updated. Uh, they needed to be agency specific. Uh, and then uh, in, in the meantime, uh, also responsible for a myriad of, of, of projects uh, at the police department. I'm responsible for the building. Uh, I've been before this board and town meeting many times to get our police department where it is today. The transition that the department has taken in the last four years because of our capital improvement plan is uh, monumental. Uh, the department was uh, suffering with regard to the roof, insulation, uh, paint, mm -hmm. and, uh, and ventilation. Uh, that is all now up to date. Uh, I serve on the capital improvement committee as well, so I had uh, direct knowledge as to our master plan and, and, and where we are uh, financially in the community with, with our other town departments. Uh, I, as, as a, uh, aside with my education, as my law enforcement career has advanced to uh, the executive level, I attended the National Academy, the FBI National Academy in Quantico. I was extremely grateful that the town of Georgetown allowed me that opportunity, and I did excel in, in that arena. Uh, I brought back a lot of valuable management assets uh, to our town and to our police department, which I currently use today. The, um, the administrative side of the police department is unique only in that uh, I work side by side with the chief, as, as, as is uh, evident with uh, my attendance of the uh, monthly department head meetings and, and my budget experience. Uh, in, in interviewing our, uh, our candidates, I, I, I set the process so that the, uh, the candidates come before uh, myself. I have a, a brief committee uh, table. Uh, talking uh, table with uh, the supervisors, and then we bring those candidates to, to, to the chief. So I would say that our, our people are our biggest asset. It's great to have a nice police department. It's nice to have uh, shiny cars, but you, you, you need to be able to count on our, our, uh, our people, and I do that. Um, I'm also um, responsible for uh, some of the smaller things in the police department. Uh, we started our honor guard. I'm, I'm the commander of the honor guard. I also have... Um, responsibilities of our fleet. I recently brought, um, I apologize for bouncing around. Okay, you said about 10 minutes. I'm trying to. Yeah, yeah try okay, because we want to get to the questions. Okay, yeah, so, I, so, I knew right. that. Um, <laughs> but, 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 but my responsibilities are many. I wanted to just uh, hit those. Uh, with regard to the fleet, uh, probably one of our, uh, our, our larger um, uh, assets that uh, brings on a lot of questions from the FinCom and the public. Uh, I brought in a $10,000 grant from Maya to try and collaborate with the other town departments uh, with that fleet initiative to try and uh, streamline our purchasing, try to streamline our repairs and so forth. So I could go on, but um, if you want me to, I will, or I'll, I'll field questions. Well, I, it's I, think it's, yeah, I think it's time for questions, so okay. I'm going to lead off with Stu. Can I do two and one? Go. You can do Sure, go. So, Lieutenant, my first question is, is why do you want to be the Georgetown Police Chief and why be do you believe you're most qualified for the position? Oh, I'm sorry. That's all the notes I just took right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so in all seriousness, sure. but yeah, just a quick summary on that. And then I, I have just one quick yeah, bullet ahead, point go. behind that. Sure. I've, uh, as I said, I've, I've been on the police department for, for 28 years, and, and I, I've served in every capacity that the department offers. Uh, my, uh, my biggest asset is I believe that I am a true leader, that I was, uh, I've been training for this position for my entire adult life that when I began my career in Georgetown, that uh, I, I set a direct path, and that path has linked to the responsibilities that I bear today. But more importantly, I've taken a lot of those responsibilities on myself, obviously delegated from the chief of police and his office and my responsibilities as a lieutenant.
but I would, I, I would submit that the, uh, the myriad of, of, of uh, successes and accomplishments that I submitted to the board are self-motivating. And I believe that in excelling and being a leader for our police department, that I have shown that the employees of the police department follow uh, my lead. Uh, the accreditation process was a daunting task with uh, three separate unions and working with the uh, elected board, uh, the appointing authority for the police department and the police chief's office to accomplish that task. Uh, no one could accomplish that without being a leader. My, my follow-up on that is um, how would you transition what you do currently um, successfully, very successfully, and um, <clears throat> How would you transition in the next six months um, with the staff that you have, and, and does it require any new hires, or are there is there enough succession planning in, in there that, that there are people that can easily fill what you've been tasked to do day to day and on the administration, operations, budgeting, that type of thing? Well, I think to be blunt, I have been doing a uh, majority of, of, of the um, Office of the Chief of Police work now with the budget. I draft the budget, I manage the budget, and the chief, through council, reviews the budget. Right. Uh, the transition with the budget is, is really a very minor situation. The budget sits on my computer, it sits on my desk, uh, and then the chief counsels uh, me with various expenditures and I seek his approval. Uh, so the transition with regard to budget and finance will be uh, slim to none. Uh, I, I have uh, responsibilities right now with recruitment and selection, professional standards in the building that I would keep as the chief. Uh, we're a small town, we're a small department. I'm a very active individual, and uh, I, I did not get into my community service, but uh, I like to be busy. And uh, being a, poli a police chief in a small town, you're a busy person. And I'm a busy person, and I like being busy. Uh, and that alone will uh, have a very minimal effect on a transition. I've sat side by side with the chief now since 2009 uh, as, as a lieutenant. And I've excelled in all those areas that I spoke about with regard to um, that executive level of responsibility. Uh, recruitment and selection, there's no need to push that down on the, in the organizational chart. I believe that should be in the chief's office and it will be in the chief's office. That's my responsibility. Uh, I will interview the candidates and uh, I will seek counsel with my command staff to see who those best candidates are. Do you foresee having two lieutenants like it's currently or is there you know, one candidate that can handle that, or you think, how, no, how do you envision that in the future? I, 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 if, if I'm chosen as your next chief, uh, I will not uh, fill my position as a lieutenant. I don't think it's necessary. I think that the, the structure of the police department, chief, one lieutenant, and a supervisor on each shift, and delegating that responsibility for patrol activity versus administration. I believe that right now, uh, the, the delineation of authority in my office as the executive officer and the administrative lieutenant would sit in the chief's office. Very good. And, and I feel I'm very capable to handle all of that. I do it now. Right. Okay. Very good. Thanks. Mr. Fowler, I'm going to ask the same question so that we are doing it as, as said, but I think you may find this very close to what Stu did just ask. But it, please br briefly describe your first 90 days on the job. Where will you place your priorities and why? Well, I think the first thing I would do was reorganize the command staff with regard to that. Uh, the lieutenant's position would not be filled. I would like to see the uh, supervisory position on the day shift. Uh, my position would become a patrol position and put someone back on the street and fulfill that two-slot patrol position around the clock again. Uh, that would eliminate a lot of our scheduling issues. Uh, having somebody, currently right now the police department is such. Chief of Police is admin which is a, a Monday through Friday schedule, and the two lieutenants are admin. I would take that lieutenant's position, and I would push that to a patrol position, seven to three, which would be a four and two rotation. It would put a full-time officer back on the, mid, uh, on the weekends, and it would eliminate the need of filling structured shifts each day or each week relative to trying to fulfill that three-step organizational um, in those admin positions. And, and don't get me wrong, uh, the current administrative uh, structure of the department has been very successful mm -hmm. and we've been able to accomplish a lot of initiatives. However, a lot of our initiatives that have been accomplished, such as accreditation, our policy and procedure manual, are now up to date and all they need to be is managed. Mm -hmm. And I did that. Mm -hmm. So I know that I can take that management um, position 
and transition it into the chief's office so that we're more productive on, on the patrol. My goal is to put another officer on the street during the, 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 the day and include that patrol position during the, during the weekend day shift. Thank you. And not have to fill so many shifts in regard to trying to keep that administrative staff on that five and two shift. Right. And we can do that, and that's, it's cost neutral. Yeah, so that, that reassigns some of the costs that we're mm -hmm. expending now on the two lieutenants' positions. Okay. And, and I think, too, just to add to that, uh, Mr. Fowler, is that currently uh, the town of Georgetown took a very bold step this year, and they actually put someone in the academy so that when the chief of police, Chief Mulligan, retires, that officer comes out of the academy, and we have no downtime whatsoever to have a full complement of our uh, 11 full-time officers. In years past, somebody retires, you find the replacement, Six months pass as they go in the academy. You're short a position for six months. You're double paying people. We, we actually did it right, and it's exciting. The officer graduates from the academy in July, and the transition plan for the Georgetown Police Department starts July 1st. I mean, you just can't get any better than that. Right. Great. Mr. Smith. Okay, great. So I had some questions that I think you've answered. I had a question about... Um, uh, the need for another uh, full-time officer, which mm -hmm. I think you've answered in terms of how you'd approach that um, uh, with the elimination of one of the lieutenant positions. Um, I had another question about your personal role in the budgeting process. And yes, sir. I think that was answered to my satisfaction. Um, so I guess the question is, um, what are the three top challenges uh, that police chiefs face today? And this can be outside of Georgetown, it's more of a sure. more of general a, question. A general question. What, what are the three challenges that you know police chiefs face and, and you see yourself taking on? Well I think I think the first challenge is unfunded mandates and training. I think that there is a push in the in the post era police officer standardized training, that model to push training initiatives back to local uh, communities. Uh, Mr. Farrell was uh, uh, part of a meeting we had uh, with the unfunded mandate office for the Commonwealth, which we never knew existed. You know, there's actually an office that cities and towns can... Really? And, and Gary hasn't visited him yet? <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne Bump. <laughs> yes. Yes, I have. I'm going to seminar with and, 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 Wow. And, and I have to give Chief Mulligan credit. He actually ventured out and, and, and scheduled a meeting, and, and uh, our town administrator attended that meeting. And, and we uh, had a very pointed conversation about how things are changing with regard to the training for police officers and that communities are now picking up that, that additional cost each year, uh, having to pay instructors versus uh, uh, having to get those instructors paid for at the academy level. Uh, but, the, but the good news is in that arena, distance learning training is now uh, fast approaching with the MPTC, the Massachusetts Police Training Committee, and we are training officers online for training that is uh, able to be trained online. Uh, with various examinations that are required to be certified as police officers. So we are uh, utilizing that. It reduces overtime. It reduces cost uh, with travel and uh, backfill, putting people in there. Uh, the second biggest challenge uh, that I think that police uh, chiefs are facing today is that with the uh, soon-to-be-eliminated Quinn Bill and the negotiated unions with full-time police officers, pay is disparate between police officers, officers that were hired many years ago under that process are now making less money and doing the same job. That's a challenge and somehow you'll need to motivate officers who will make less money than their counterparts because of the change in the Quinn Bill and the change of union contracts. Uh, and I think that is a challenge because that's a financial challenge. Anything that's fiscal is, 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 is a challenge for, for municipalities. Um, and then the third, I think, is societal changes in general. I think if you look at the legislative changes in uh, the ban on assault weapons, the marijuana law, things like that. Traditional roles of law enforcement for police officers in those arenas change every day. You know, what was, what, what was uh, against the law and a priority 20 years ago is no longer a marijuana possession. We need to train our police officers to realize that, that things change, societal opinions change on things, and that is a challenge not only in the training arena but for police officers in the philosophical uh, uh, ideas that police officers bring to the table for law enforcement. Great. Thank you. Okay, so my question is, it revolves around management, and it, it's, it, it's kind of a multi-level uh, multi question. Um, what, what would you say your management style is? Um, how would you apply that as the chief? And uh, how would you um, handle 
the uh, how um, you manage people now that you're the top person in the organization because like uh, sometimes if you're the second or third people look at you differently and then when you have to make those tough decisions as number one it gets more difficult to manage so management style and how would you manage you know how would you change your management style if any change I don't I, 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 I don't think I change my management style and I'll tell you why I think that uh, based on the assignments that I've received throughout my career here uh, in, in the police department and having to lead by example if you had to uh, describe my leadership style it would be I, I continually lead by example I can perform every single function in that police department every single function from shoveling the septic tank cover which needs to be done sometimes to affecting an arrest to doing the budget to working on the building uh, I, I, I continually lead by example and I think that in, in that arena with the people that I work with they respect that in me as a police officer we're police officers first and then we're managers and leaders second you're always a police officer you have to look at your staff and the people that you work with you're a sworn officer first and then you take all of the qualities and then you have rank and responsibility but we're all police officers so when you're working with your with your employees and uh, subordinate role I, I have been an executive officer now for almost four years and I, I've excelled in that role with uh, my employees and I believe they do respect me because of that and I believe uh, I will not change how I how I do business I think that the difficult decisions I've had to make with internal investigations termination discipline I do that now I don't think that will change my views of how I handle those things uh, when I sit in the in the uh, corner office as, as the police chief so again another management type question um, how are you going to keep track of what your police officers uh, uh, and your whole, you know, your whole team is doing uh, and evaluate them as individuals, but also evaluate the need, you know, overall need for additional, uh, I'd say, growth opportunities or improvement? Or how would you handle something like that? Well, I, I formulated and negotiated the performance evaluation system that we have today at the police department. It's my responsibility to determine which employees report to which line supervisor, and then we do yearly evaluations on those employees. Uh, it was a difficult process. We're one of few police departments who actually have that performance review system in place. Uh, that took a lot of work with the union. Uh, I, I told uh, the, the union stewards at the time that I think it would help them more than hurt them because a lot of people think that structured performance reviews are a hindrance to their career. Uh, I, I was able to sell that to them. Uh, to answer your question relative to how you motivate people, I think that in a small police agency like us, you need to find an officer's niche. You need to find their passion. Every human being has passion, even, even someone who you could look at straight in the eye and say, they don't want to be here, we don't know why they're here, but there is a passion because they started here at some point. There was something that, that, that sparked in them to become a police officer, a dispatcher, a civilian employee of the police department. And as the chief of police and as the commander of a, uh, a, a command staff, you need to find that passion in that person. <laughs> and, that, and as a leader, it's, it, that is your responsibility. Because like I said when I started um, my initial presentation, the people are our most important asset. And I think that the structured performance review, the fact that we are cognizant of the fact that this is a small agency, there's not a lot of room for growth, but there's always opportunity. There's always opportunity to do something for the community. And I think that we, as managers, as leaders, we need to find those opportunities, seek them out on their behalf, and then assign that person so that that passion is found again in, 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 their, in their job. Okay. Going back to Stu. Um, in the next, what are your professional goals in the next one, two, three years? What would you say the top you know, three issues would be um, if you were chief? I, I think that, that, that the department has done a great job in being a community-oriented police department. And I think that, uh, what, but one of my primary goals is, and, and I use the state of the, the, the town address, I would like to be more involved in the state of town address. I would like to um, bring the police department's goals and their accomplishments, our successes and our failures to that level to determine whether we are doing truly what we say we do with the public. I think we have a great reputation with the public. I just want to ensure that it's really there. And whether it be by way of survey, I think that there should be quarterly uh, meetings uh, with the Board of Selectmen on our, on our uh, productivity so that you're aware of what we're doing. 
see that we have trends, crash trends, quality of life issues. Probably in a, in a small uh, community like us, quality of life issues that the police deal with are probably our primary focus. Our job is to protect this community and serve the community and prevent crime. But the quality of life issues, I'm working with the chairman's office right now relative to a, sol a solicitation bylaw. I have three other legislative initiatives uh, before his desk to see if there are things that we can do to change our bylaws to solve some of those, uh, those um, quality of life issues. You know, we have noise ordinances that are weak in our town with our bylaws, and we get a lot of calls for noise complaints. We need to tighten up that bylaw so that it's, it, it, it mirrors the mass general law so that we as your enforcers can go out and solve those quality of life issues. But also, too, be mindful that our primary job is to protect our, our, our residents and our community. Thank you. Garrett? Uh, describe your approach to team building and uh, is, is this going to be important to you? Well, I think I am a team builder at this time. I think that I could not accomplish everything that I put before the board tonight in my package without being a team builder. Um, I mean, I love working at the police department. Everybody knows it. I'm very proud of the police department. We probably have some of the finest police officers in, 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 in the entire country. You know, when I traveled to Quantico, Virginia, I met other police officers. I've heard the stories. Uh, I'm an assessor for the, for, for the uh, Accreditation Commission, and I travel. Uh, I've assessed 11 police departments, police departments like Burlington, Newburyport, Chelmsford, some of our local police departments here. I sit on the Standards Committee. And when I bring those policies, when I bring those ideas, when I bring those initiatives back to our department, it is my job to bring it to the team and so that we are successful. So I think that team building is what we do today. And I think that's why we are successful. I think we are a successful police department because of that. Um, organization, un uniformity, health and wellness. I mean, you look at our police department, you see that. And that's a result of the management team that's in place today. And I use the word team because the command staff, it's a strong command staff. Uh, and I think that as chief, I will bring that to the next level because I do have some ideas that I think we could take another step, another initiative to move it forward. You want to share those ideas? Well, I think, I think the change in the command staff will be pivotal. I think that having two executive officers has been somewhat confusing for the police department. Uh, having two second-in-commands in a very uh, uh, militant-style organization where everybody has a direct report, we need to get back to that direct report. I'd like to take the 15 reserve officers that we have and platoon-style the reserve officers so that they report directly to one supervisor for both performance, equipment needs, training needs, remedial training, and then that platoon is then brought to the lieutenant's office for review and ultimately signed off by the chief. Because right now, the delineated authority with two lieutenants is very, um, it gets watered down. You have to talk to too many people, when really you should just have to talk to one direct supervisor. The FBI recommends every person who supervises a person only have Five people should have one person to report to. We have 15 reserves. We have three supervisors. If you divide that out, right, it's perfect. I think it's a perfect solution. So that's important. See? Um, so if you had to boil it down, you know, from your experience and observation, what's the, the single most important characteristic uh, of an effective police chief? I think accessibility. Uh, the fact that I live in the community, I think that uh, accessibility and uh, it should never be a challenge to find the chief. It never should be a challenge to talk to the chief. Uh, you know, when you're a softball coach and you like me and uh, I, I'm in the community every day and, and, and I find that challenge, I don't even find it a challenge. I just coach a softball ga uh, game tonight for the, uh, I'm a, the, uh, uh, Varsity assistant coach. We're five and one, by the way. <laughs> outstanding, outstanding right. start. What's up? What's up with the one? <laughs> yeah, what happened with the one? Uh, so, uh, but 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 those type of initiatives uh, in 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 having a, a challenge to say I'm not a rearview manager, a rearview mayor manager. I live in this community. I see everybody every day. Everybody knows who I am. My telephone number is in the book. Everybody knows where I live. Uh, and so, probably the biggest challenge is that um, that anonymity type thing. Uh, for managers who don't live in their community. I was, uh, I've lived here since I've been uh, five or six years old, and uh, I love Georgetown. 
Right. And, and, and I love representing the police department, and I know I can lead the police department. Can I just do a sure, yeah, 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 so, sure. so thanks for that. Um, so our, our current police chief is um, one of his strengths is that he's very good at publicizing the department's accomplishments, successes, whether it's an important arrest, um, a grant, an award, an educational accomplishment. Yes, he is. Um, talk about your ability to do that and where that is on your priority list. Well, I think if you look at those initiatives, I've been sitting right beside him when we do it. Uh, so I know uh, uh, being a part of it, uh, but also being responsible for a lot of it too. So that is a priority for me. I think that uh, uh, Chief Mulligan has built a, a wonderful rapport with the public in, in, in shaping the, the Georgetown Police Department. And I've been proud to be a part of that, and I would not change any part of that. However, I would like to see, I would like to see those quarterly meetings. I would like to see uh, a, a little more for, for the Chief's office, more engagement with the other departments. Uh, I've worked on many collaborative initiatives for the town of Georgetown. To me, the town of Georgetown is the five departments total. The police department's one with the primary responsibility of protection. But if you get to the department head level, we need to all work together so that we can consolidate, so that we can consortium buy, so that we can do the things to reduce our cost and be more effective. And I enjoy that part of, of, of the management uh, of, of the police department. My primary objective and responsibilities is the law enforcement side, but the management of the police department is inclusive of those ideas because it makes the town more successful and we're not fighting for that same dollar. We can share that dollar. Great, thank you. And, and, and again, I'm kind of piggybacking off Steve's. Uh, I think he answered one of the questions I had was, you know, describe the general communication and uh, your general communication relationship management style regarding, you know, uh, communication with the town administrator uh, and with the Board of Selectmen. And I think you've answered the Board of Selectmen one. But there's, there's two other areas that I'd like to have you talk about is um, the communication and relationship with the town administrator's office. And secondly, uh, how about fight, uh, fight department uh, relations uh, as that goes? Okay. I'll take the town administrator first. Not I mean, currently, but how you would see it as the chief. Okay. You know, maybe a little currently, but how, sure. any uh, improvements there or it's going great or... What would you do? I'll give you both sides. I think that, um, excuse me, uh, Mr. Farrell sitting right here, he knows that uh, I work daily with his office. Uh, you, you could not complete the initiatives with the budgeting process. You could not complete the initiatives of capital improvement. You could not complete the initiatives of hiring without working with the town administrator. He's our personnel director. He's our human resource director. You know, he, he wears a lot of hats. So I, I spend a lot of time at town hall. Uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm very familiar with uh, every office in town hall, and I don't think that I would need to improve on my communications w w with Mr. Farrell. I would, I would ask the opposite. I would say, what does he need from us? Because, like I say, I spend a lot of time in his office. He he's, he's allowed us to be successful in our initiatives because he does support uh, the police department. Uh, I would ask what more I could do as the new police chief to be more effective on his side of, of, of the table because my, my communication with, with, with uh, Mr. Farrell's office is um, it's daily, whether it's by email, telephone, uh, memo. Uh, so I mean, I, I don't have to improve the communications with Town Hall. Okay. Uh, I'm over there a lot. <laughs> I would concur. Are you sick of or what? Yeah, <laughs> what about the fight department? Not the fight department. Uh, the, the, uh, we, we share a building, so we're roommates, and when I took the, uh, the, the sergeant's position, I did uh, take the task of taking the building over. That was a, a position that was not necessarily handed to me, but uh, I saw a lot of deficits in, in the building. Uh, I took the lead, and I worked with uh, previous fire chiefs as a sergeant and now working with Chief Beardsley. Him and I actually sat down, and we decided that we should do something really ingenious and have him handle certain things that the fire department side would handle like fire alarms and smoke detectors and all those things, fire extinguishers, and then I would handle the outside maintenance aspect of the building so that we could consolidate that funding, which we did that. He transferred some money, I transferred some money. I took over the generator because we're full time there. We have 24 hour communications. The generator panel, this is just a side, a side note, just to show you how we did collaborate to work together. The generator panel for the generator was in the fire department. It wasn't housed full time and no one's there at night. Mm. 
So, you know, Dawn Light on Marblehead, let's move it upstairs to where the full-time staff is, right? So now we have full monitoring of that system. That's, that system is 100% is, uh, uh, functional under, under our watch because the fire department was assigned to that task but wasn't there full-time to deal with it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't a fair assignment. Mm -hmm. It should have been under the direction of the police chief. And the only reason why it wasn't is when they built the building, the fire department was there first. We moved in second. So they needed a generator, so they had the generator downstairs. So those type of relationships between myself, management, and the fire chief are uh, great. I think that uh, the police officers and the firefighters on the ground, uh, that's what supervisors are for. If there are problems that arise, supervisors solve problems. We keep that relationship open. Uh, we all have the same goal, to protect the town, to respond to emergencies. We have separate missions at times, but we've collaborated through the Communication Center project, which I spearheaded. We took the Communication Center. Fire Department has an SOP, Standing Operating Procedure, for their operation to the Communication Center. The Police Department has their policy and procedures. So there are three entities, and they were budgeted as such, Communications, Police, and Fire. So now they all work as one. So you up. A little follow-up to that. I, um physical plant and all that, uh, explain in, in your view and your experience um, computer integ integration and, and, and that in the future now, mm -hmm. and then in the future kind of where we're headed for, uh, for policing. Okay, if I could take you to the past just a little mm -hmm. bit. Uh, prior to 2008, uh, we, we were running a software program that was access-based, Microsoft access-based. It had limitations, it had repair issues, it, uh, it, it just was not functional. It was something that was purchased for very little money. In 2008, uh, I actually spearheaded the IMC initiative, $115,000 Warren article at town meeting. Uh, we got what over 200 police departments use today, the IMC uh, police CAD sop software. Uh, we, we implemented that with, uh, with the help of uh, uh, Sergeant DeFio, who's absolutely ingenious with computers, and uh, he's our IT person today. And that technology has really raised the bar for us with regard to UCR reporting, Uniform Crime Reporting, NIBRS, uh, National uh, um, Crime Reporting. And so we are now able to communicate electronically with that system. As opposed to years past, everything was done and sent it in. Now it's all electronic. Uh, so that's where we are today. I see tomorrow with the GIS mapping system that's coming out. I know Mike's office is working with that with the planning department. There's a law enforcement component to that, which is exciting. And that GIS layering mapping is, is, is going to be a critical component in law enforcement. And then there will be a connection with a CJA system. It's the uh, criminal justice information system, which will connect all police departments. We're, we're, we're connected right now to receive data, but we're not connected to share data between departments. So that's another component that's coming in the future. And I think that will be the pivotal move for law enforcement as far as the sharing of information. And the interesting part is with the IMC contract that we negotiated in 2008, we are the hub component. BSS, our current IT uh, company, as well as myself, sat at the table with IMC and we basically strong-armed the hub component for free. And so it sits there waiting. Uh, we're we're going to take the lead on that, we hope. Uh, now that the new communication center is here to actually share data through other IMC uh, CAD systems with police departments. We've worked on that with uh, David Bell's office with IMC. So uh, that's exciting to be able to actually have, I mean, we have computers in the cruisers and all that. That's all new technology to us, but it's really not because we've been doing it now since 2004. We want to take the next step and have that information retrieval and be able to use that data on patrol. So will that be for contiguous towns or virtually just kind of in the region? In the or, region. Or across the state? As, as much as somebody wants to pay, you can do it. So if you want to have seven or eight communities do it together, okay. there's just a cost to that. It's a license or whatever. It, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. To be able to share between each other. Right. And with the, with, with the permissions to view only versus change data gotcha. and <laughs> with the uh, CEO's pr approval, the chief's office. So. Uh, we, we're at the ground floor with that right now. We did have a meeting with some of our neighbors uh, concerning that. Right now, some of our neighbors do not use IMC because of the cost. Uh, we were able to jump in early, uh, but you know, Newburyport and Amesbury and communities like that all use uh, IMC. So, uh, my hope is to see that hub and and be a part of that hub. Interesting. Great. Thank you.
Mr. Bauer? Uh, would you describe your most difficult experience you've had during your career? Uh, what did you learn from this experience, and how have you grown as a result of this experience? I would say probably the worst experience uh, is the notif a death notification of a child or a family member to one of our residents. I've done a couple of them, and uh, probably the one that was most telling was a 13-year-old uh, that was uh, uh, that was fatally injured, and uh, you never forget it. And I think what you learn from it is the ability that someday you'll probably have to do it again. And uh, I I was uh, the lead on the on the search for one of our residents uh, during the blizzard, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it did not. It had a tragic result, but at least we're able to bring closure to the family. Uh, but I, I think, and in, in what I learned from that is that I'll be able to do it again. I'm not going to like it, but I'll be able to do it again. And uh, I take it personally because of uh, uh, my residency here and the people that I've, I've grown up with and the, uh, and the charge you have to take care of the residents of Georgetown. Uh, so it does weigh heavy on me. Uh, but I do have to, I, I, I've learned to, do, to deal with that. Um, so I, I have a question uh, specific to, to what I've heard is that um, I hear what you're saying that your current role and a lot of what you do uh, mm -hmm. while applying your new role and you, you're proposing a new structure for the mm -hmm. one lieutenant. Um, well, let's say you get to the point, and, I, and I'm looking at your resume with the grants, mm -hmm. there's a grant opportunity and you can't get to it. You may think you can now, but let's just say you can't get to it. You don't have the time mm -hmm. because of everything else going on. In this new structure, and you and you believe this grant is important, by the way, and mm -hmm. you want to get it done. What do you do in this new structure when that happens? Well, I know the the other lieutenant's office does not write any grants, and so I'm going to lean on that office to write some grants. The the sergeants right now, currently, uh, Sergeant Defio has uh, taken the lead, uh, thanks to taking it uh, from me. Just as from a managerial perspective, I still monitor that grant with him. He's taken the lead on the 911 grant, so I have begun doing that now because you need to share that knowledge, you need to share that responsibility. And I think in looking at those grants, uh, I would do exactly that. There are people There are people on the police department who are very talented, who need that experience and need that exposure. And just like I did 10 years ago when Chief Mulligan took over, if you offer someone who has, a, we've just hired three new people in the last five years. They're just patrolmen. They're out there doing their job. But they may find an interest in that one grant that they may think is uh, special to them or a driver in their passion. And you need to counsel them, train them, and mentor them. Because you can't do it all. You can't do it all by yourself. Okay. So, so you, you, um, uh, you're prepared to, to delegate and, uh, as required in those situations? I and, do it now. you do see a path to get yes. this done? Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Thanks. Being the A-type personality, that, that's... You, you think know. I'm an A-type person, like Mr. Chairman? <laughs> <laughs> um, it, you know, and, and that's an area where I, I'll, and I'll say this, I mean, I, as a question, but um, I think it's a, maybe a good transition. What do you think your greatest weakness is? Well, it, it's interesting, and I, you know, I, I don't think you had to be an expert to understand that that question would probably be asked, so I have thought about it. But um, <laughs> uh, many years ago, I, I attended the Sterling Institute of Management in the corporate world. And they did an analysis on all the supervisors for uh, the insurance company. And uh, they, they dissect what your, your style is, obviously type A, organized. And probably the biggest weakness that they found was that people who pay too much attention to detail can sometimes lose the broad mission. And um, mm -hmm. interesting enough, when I was at the FBI National Academy, I took this uh, same examination, except it was much more detailed. And believe it or not, they found the same problem. <laughs> you know, they, they, you, you do all of these exercises. It's just days and days of exercises in which your management style is and, and how you accomplish your daily tasks and your, and your goals and what drives you to accomplish your goals. And they found the same thing. And uh, in seeking counsel for that particular weakness, uh, I'm continually taking a step back. I continually make sure that, you know, I don't uh, pay too much attention to that perfect typed paper that needs to be submitted for the budget. Mike's actually taught me, you know, because he's, if, if you want to look at a person who can take you down from that narrow focus on, you know, it's spelled wrong, it's not presented right, <laughs> the big picture, 
you know, Mike has counseled me many times on that, and I do take a step back. Uh, and, and I think that's my biggest weakness. And I know it. I deal with it. Uh, but it also can be an asset, too. And they told me to, uh, you know, in that, in that training class that, you know, that focus, though, is what drives you to succeed. So, you, you know, I don't, I don't lose sight of that. But uh, that would be my biggest weakness, Mr. Chairman. Okay. What's your greatest strength? Uh, my greatest strength is that I, I believe I am a true leader of, of, of people. I think that I can take any task, put, be put in a role, and come out the leader. Uh, I've done that many times. Uh, my service uh, for the town with CIP. Uh, I served on the school committee for three years. I sat in uh, that chair right there. Uh, took the lead on many, many initiatives, uh, some that are still existing today. So I, uh, uh, I found those experiences very valuable. And, and it really shows uh, that I, I believe I am a leader. And a little follow-up to that is, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the detail issue and, you know, being recognizing the ability uh, or recognizing that you have to delegate because you can't be the chief and do it all. And that's mm -hmm. the point I was talking about before was, you know, in your role as number two, you got to realize, you know, I'm the chief now if, if, if that's the case, you know, and mm -hmm. there's different responsibilities. You can't take everything with you and you have to rely on the people underneath you. Right. Okay. And I think, too, Mr. Chairman, in, uh, I, I, in anticipation of, of, of being chosen for the position and, and looking at my, my future, uh, I created the organizational chart that hangs in the police department today. I looked at it. Uh, there's a different way to slice that pie. Mm -hmm. There is no doubt. And you can, you can, broaden, you can broaden those responsibilities. And uh, we can be more effective in some areas so that more... Uh, responsibility can be given to our police officers, but also more responsibility given to our line supervisors and our executive officer. Mm -hmm. All right, Stu. Sorry, he's taking that. No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, when hiring new police officers, <clears throat> um, the previous candidate had mentioned. Forgive me if I don't have the number right. Was there nine police officers that are going to be right. retiring in the, in the next six years? Is that about right? Nine full-time police officers? Or was it six in the next nine years? I'm getting backwards. I, I wrote um, down nine. Was it nine? He said the rest of were nine full-time police officers that would be eventually um, retiring somewhere in the next six years or so. Um, how? W w what are the qualities that you're looking for internally but also for candidates that you're bringing in in terms of building that bench strength to be able to uh, you know have the right team for succession planning with as officers retire well I'm not sure where that number came from I mean we only have 10 officers 11 including the chief so that I don't see from an actuarial standpoint just uh, I don't see that number but I don't think that's part of the question right. General right. Succession um, planning and but I know nine police officers are not retiring in six years at we would be doing much more planning right now if that was the case. Uh, but nonetheless, as far as being able to continue with the uh, hiring practice and standards that we have today, that is the chief's job. You know, I, I, I wrote that policy, right. and it's important uh, to ensure that those standards stay in place. We're one of the few police departments that have a physical fitness standard to be hired as a reserve and then as a full-time officer. You know, and we have that physical fit. I'm in charge of that plan and program. I can actually do the test still today. I still go out there and do it to make sure I can. Maybe I won't someday. I don't know. <laughs> right. I'll delegate that. Delegate that. <laughs> delegate that. Right. But, um, there you, go. Um, you know, uh, that, that is a very Im Im important component uh, to that plan. And then additionally, that the standards we have in place today will be time tested because the people that we hire today and po possibly our reserve force will be our full-time officers tomorrow. The attrition rate of the reserve force is uh, speeding up a bit because uh, we don't have the turnover that some police departments do. The Georgetown Police Department is a very, very good place to work. You don't see full-time officers leaving to go to other agencies. There's a reason for that. There's a reason that we've got, uh, we, we, we have a, a, a solid community that supports its police department. We have a great management team that supports its staff. And to expound on that as far as taking from our reserve force when we hire folks, or we may have to someday hire someone who's already full-time trained. That could be something that we haven't done in the past, but because of the uh, lack of turnover in our, our force and our reserves tend to go elsewhere, or we do have professional reserve officers, reserve officers who are just part-time police officers, what they want to be. 
they're full-time firefighters, they're full-time linemen, they're full-time accountants, whatever job they do, they also work for us part-time. So that plan and, and keeping a succession plan, we just did it this year. We, we actually were proactive under the direction of Mike's office. We actually hired someone before someone retired. And we're going to do that again. And we have to ensure we do it again because we'd fill, uh, Mike, Mike made a valuable statement. He said, pay 90% now or 150% later. Right. Mm. And I was before the board when we did that. Mm. And that's absolutely true. Not because of the fiscal aspect of it, but we have people knowing we do that and they anticipate a retirement, they'll stick around. They'll say, well, there potentially is a job mm. coming up in two years. And if you're a reserve officer, you have an opportunity to become a full-time police officer in a community like Georgetown. Gary? When, when, how will you ensure that the services provided by the department are consistent with the needs and the desires of the community? That's a good question, Mr. Fowler, and I think that's why I, I, I go back to the state of the town address and I go back to um, quarterly reports and surveys. I would like to truly know whether we do the job we say we do with our community. Uh, maybe a uh, uh, more uh, open house more involvement with our schools. Uh, I, I, I did uh, applaud our efforts uh, back in 2006 to 2009 when we had the full-time SRO. I think that um, uh, not necessarily uh, utilizing a full-time position in that capacity, but if we can move our schedule around, a little more innovation with not just having two people on duty, two people on duty, two people on duty, shifting that schedule, defining uh, additional roles for some of our patrolmen, we can accomplish that. And we can, we can determine if we are doing enough with our schools, are we doing enough with our elderly services? Okay, in the interest of time, I think we're almost there. Uh, uh, one quick can last I do question. Two, just, uh, I think there will be two quick ones. Right. Um, just to uh, equate, make the uh, questions equal. Yep. Um, in your view, are there equipment or training gaps right now that compromise the safety of our police force or our citizens? Absolutely not. Our, our police officers are, are trained pursuant to Mass General Law and pursuant to our own policy. And some of our policies exceed the requirements of Mass General Law for the certification of police officers, but those critical components are met each and every year. And that includes um, firearms, use of force, uh, bias-based profiling, and sexual harassment. Those are the five uh, components of accreditation and the five components of mandatory training. And now ethics is included every two years. And we do those train we, we, we provide those training for our police officers with distance learning online. Uh, it's a challenge because of that funding issues, but we're trying to, you know, we're, we're trying to accomplish those goals so that we don't minimize our training because that's the important component. And the equipment too at this point? Yes. Our equipment our, our equipment is actually we're in pretty good shape. I, I said that this year at the budget uh, presentation. Our fleet's the best it's been in four years. The police department is in phenomenal shape. Uh, it's got a new roof. It's been painted. It has new insulation. It's got new ventilation. We've got new roof vents coming in the spring. Spring's here, but it's coming. New septic coming. <laughs> we have new septic coming. Got new weapons. We just got new weapons, thanks to uh, Officer Jones. I, 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 I supervise that program. Um, we're working with Glock. That was a, uh, a, a, a zero cost to the town. fantastic program. So, um, we're in good shape. We carry we carry the appropriate weaponry in the cruisers. Uh, unlike other communities, all of our cruisers have assault. Uh, I'm sorry, um, um, patrol rifles and shotguns in two of them. So we carry both, which is a unique. Uh, uh, you know, we have three banks in our town, so we're ready. We have we, we have good equipment. Uniform. All the equipment's the same in all the units, right? Yes, sir. So right. everybody knows. Right. I want to hear what protects. So banks. last quick uh, last <laughs> question then is: uh, Can you tell me about a? Uh, a uh, person that you admire and what makes him special? Uh, I, would, I would say it's probably my mother. Uh, my mother died when she was 42 years old, uh, four, four children in my family. Um, she loved Georgetown. She, uh, she loved the Georgetown schools. Uh, one thing my parents did back in 1969 is they ventured out from Salem, Massachusetts and came to a little known place called Georgetown and towed all their four kids up here. And we were chastised by my family and we did that. Why are you going there? What is up there? You know, and that was the best thing those people ever did. So I, I'm grateful to my parents for bringing me to Georgetown because look where I live today. Uh, but it's definitely my mother, hard worker. She died young. Um, she was an advocate of our schools. I support a, uh, a scholarship every year on her behalf. 
and uh, just a, a, a good role model for me and my family. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, so this is the last question, and then we'll give you, we'll keep it to five minutes. Yes, sir. Uh, wrap up and, you know, uh, anything that you want to kind of do as a, as a uh, recap. Um, so knowing you had the interview tonight, mm -hmm. what, was, uh, what was the question that you were prepared for that we didn't ask you, and how would you answer it? Uh, I didn't. I didn't prepare for that question, uh, but <laughs> I, I, I would. I would have suspected at least a question or a criticism of the department and something that we needed to improve from the board. Some knowledge from the board of a question uh, concerning uh, our activity, uh, our processes, our programs that needs improvement. That I would have to answer and determine whether I could fix that. So that that is probably the question that um, I'm glad you didn't answer ask <laughs> <laughs> okay all right so uh let's use the next five minutes four minutes to you know recap you know anything else you want to bring forth and you know just as a kind of a closing statement well i want to thank the board tonight for uh having me here and considering me for this position uh, as i said i've I, i've worked for the for the town of georgetown for 28 years on the police department um, i volunteer in this community anyway i can't actually start it on the fire department uh, for two years prior to becoming a police officer. And uh, I've served on a number of boards. I represent this board on CIP. Uh, I'm, I'm a, as I said, I'm a softball coach. I've worked with the GA for many years uh, uh, coaching our kids. And um, I've excelled in every, every assignment given to me at the Georgetown Police Department. I give it 1,000%. I've donated thousands of, t of hours of, uh, of my time to the community and to the police department. Uh, my wife often says to me, she sees me go to work in the morning and loading tools into my truck with a police uniform on it. She says, you know, she, she, she thinks the public safety building is my, my summer home, you know. Right. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I, I get a kick out of that. But um, every, everything I've done, I've prepared for this day. I've prepared for this moment to run the Georgetown Police Department, to command it. I've administrated the department since 2006 on a full-time basis with every aspect of administration, human resources, budget and finance, uh, capital, and uh, I think I've proven that I can command this police department now. I think I have the leadership skills and abilities. Uh, when I was in the academy uh, down in Quantico with the FBI, there was a, a, a very telling quote that uh, uh, Dr. Ness, one of our um, uh, biographers down there, had said, you know, um, managers administrate and leaders innovate. And I think that I've proven that I am an innovator, I am a leader, and I'm certainly uh, ready to be the next chief of police in Georgetown, to be our chief of police, the community that I reside in, and I'm ready for that if you give me the chance. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Was that five minutes, Mr. Chairman? You know what? Right on time. Yes, right, sir. right on cue. <laughs> Perfect. So, well, we want to thank you for coming in, and thank you for your thank service, you for obviously. Me. And, um, you know, we are going to uh, bring up, you know, uh, this the subject of uh, the two candidates uh, um, next Monday night. So and that's where we are with the process. So All right, we'll thank be, you certainly again. be in touch. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have some other business. We have town planner here. So we would like to, uh, let me, let's call up Howard. Um, side issue, how did it go? Was there a lot of, a lot of interest? Uh, we got a few people in. Uh, we got a couple of tenants in the landlord. Right. Representing their tenants. A couple okay. people couldn't make it, okay. but uh, things will be posted tomorrow and we'll okay. the process. So. All right. Great, thank you. We just define what it was. That was yeah. Sorry, that was the uh, the rental assistance program from the affordable housing uh, trust that we put forth, and the meeting uh, informational meeting was tonight. So I was curious to know how many people uh, came. So it was, right. a good, it was a good kickoff. Good so. kickoff. Okay, great. So uh, sorry, I digressed. Um, right. So we're here about the. Um, I'm here permit. to give an update yeah, on the MS4. Yes, uh, go. That permit is now up to date. The last okay. time I was here, I just wanted to give them an update at that time, but one department needed to give input, so I've received that and it's ready to be signed. Okay. All right. Uh, also, the we have a request from the planning board to approve the layout of Abbey, Abbey Road and Cedar Lane, which is on the warrant, right? right? Which we have warrant article for? Yes. Okay, you want to just give us a, just a... Two minute, one minute. Uh, well, uh, the process that's occurred is uh, all the uh, owners with property on those two roads have been noticed that the selectmen would be laying the road out. 
you know, once the road is laid out and presented at town meeting, if accepted, we'll have the 120 days to complete all the paperwork. Okay. But as I, I, I think, briefly touched upon at the last meeting, both of these roads, to our knowledge, uh, are laid out separate in fee, so it will be an easy process. Okay. All right, so do we, do these require votes from us, Mike? Are we... Uh, the just, just board the, should authorize you to sign the permit. To sign the uh, okay. All right. So with these signatures, uh, they go on file with the town clerk. Okay. And then we can proceed with other uh, administrative work in preparation of town meeting. Okay. That administrative work just being clearing up titles and deeds and so forth. Okay. So basically, what I'm doing is certifying that the documents are. Oh, he's, we're but, talking about oh, the permit. That's the permit. permit. Yeah. All I need to do is sign it. Correct. Yeah. I see the penalties of. Well, they, they need to authorize them to sign. I, I move that we authorize uh, Chairman of the Select Board to sign the uh, NPDES P2 small M I can read it, MS4 oh, General no, Permit no, Annual Report. <laughs> I didn't think you had it. I thought I was the only one that had the, the original copy, but that's okay. All right, we have a, uh, we have a, all right, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? <clears throat> Mr. Fowler. We're up to date on this now and not behind. Is, it with this, is that what this does? So, well, right. This is an annual uh, document, okay. and uh, it goes from the 1st of April to the end of March. But you have till the end of April to submit it, so it's on time. But we were, we, is unlike the past, right? This we is, won't get a, a yeah. fine notice I remember that. this year. Yeah. We don't get a nasty note. Good. Well, that's great. That, that's that's congratulations. That's great. Yes, that you have it, right. Awesome. It was a little late last year, but I was new at the time. I wasn't aware. Right. The date. It went a few months. Later. All right. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Motion carries. Uh, and as far as the lay the layouts, we don't have to vote. Do we have to? Yeah, do a vote I, on that. Okay. I think you should. All right. Accept the order of layout from the planning board. Okay. I move to do them one at a time. Yes. Okay. I move to accept the order of layout from the planning board for Cedar Lane. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 I move to accept the order of layout for Abbey Road from the planning board. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. I know it's a late night. It's nine o'clock. You're gonna sign those a little bit later. Oh, I'm gonna do them. Oh, all right. You want to take no, them? No, I, I can pick them up tomorrow. Yeah. All right. I'll just leave them with Janet. That's great. Okay. Thank all you right. very much. Thank, you, Thank you so much. All right. Um, only other thing on our um, agenda for tonight: um, selectmen's report. I will say that um, I know the residents on Pond Street are still, um, you know, obviously want to hear from us on the fence. What I've done so far is um, I've, I've done some research. I've tried to reach out to uh, Jack Moultrie. Still waiting on a response. I did that uh, just recently. I wanted to speak to him about the offense. I've also talked to Peter Durkee. Um, he was on vacation last week about getting together and doing a site visit um, with him just to get a little bit more information on if we did take the fence down, how we would accomplish that, um, where the guardrail would go. I want to see it hands-on. So um, I will send out an email to everybody anybody on this board that's interested in you know when we we actually come to a, a successful time and date if anybody else can join if, if everybody else is interested in joining us um, so we haven't forgot Pond Street uh, the fence issue on Pond Street um, so that being said again we're gonna be coming down with uh, Peter Durkee for, for some last some last look at that and then maybe uh, have some more discussion with the residents uh, Mike you want to give us anything on the uh, the warrant or budget or anything like that? Uh, we have completed the draft of the motions and they've been submitted to uh, legal counsel for review. Uh, and um, we're just waiting for the uh, chairman's letter from finance committee and we'll, you, you have an advanced copy of the package mm -hmm. minus the chairman's letter tonight so as soon as we get the chairman's letter we'll we'll put put it out to the general public okay great all right and the only other thing i wanted to mention was the uh, wine tasting uh night on the town music and wine uh tasting at the library uh saturday this saturday night april 27th uh 6 30 to 8 30 wine tasting and jazz and eight to nine is coffee and dessert 
So uh, tickets are available to Georgetown Liquors, and I think tickets are available at the door also. Do I have that right? Yes. I think so, yeah. Okay. Um, that being said, any other new business to be brought before the Board of Selectmen tonight? Okay, hearing none. Just, just two points. Oh, um, go. Uh, I thought elections, I April 30th. <laughs> oh, just want to remind people, elections that's April 30th, right. and uh, town meeting is, is it the 6th? Yes, Monday right. the 6th right. of May. Right. So just uh, some, some quickly approaching dates that are uh, very important. And we have a meeting next Monday night to discuss the results of the interviews tonight and some other small small items that we will probably be taking care of. Uh, yeah, Palm Street is coming back. The Palm Street's coming back, okay, next Monday night. And All right. We, we have a public hearing for the um, solicitation. For the solicitation. solicitation. Right. And uh, actually, it's a quite busy meeting, and we have our uh, financial auditors coming oh, in. Oh, the auditors are coming in on the 29th. The audit report. All right. It's so going to be gonna, a busy meeting. It's going to be a busy so, meeting. So, if, if you'll let me know, Mr. Chair, I'll do my best to uh, do a site visit or whatever. Yeah, I just want to, uh, again, coordinate with Peter. I, I just didn't have a chance to call him today. He did call me, and I just didn't have a chance to get back to him. So, just but as, yeah, I'd like to. Yeah, so you know, as we always, no, we said the police department does a good job of patting each other on the on the back sometimes and bringing the good. I mean, mm -hmm. what a fine job our chief has done. I mean, he's right. left us with a hard decision going right. forward, and and but it's good that he has done that. Right. Okay. Um, any other new business? Hearing none, I entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night. Uh, who has the storm?